All right. Questions. Otherwise, we're going to go back to the wheel because that's what I'm better at. Although now that I have the spindle out, I'm like, I'm going to do that later and I'm going to get better at it. <laughs> Soot sprite slippers, it's true. Because the internet is a magical place. If it grows, I leave it alone. I touch it, it dies. Oh no. It me. All right, let's take all my failed spinnings. I'll pull it apart a bit. Refluff it up. Get back on track. I spin much faster on the wheel because I always have it on the twistiest thing. And I need to let the drop spindle spin more. I am now realizing that's what my problem is, is there's not enough spin in it. Because I want to spin at the speed I spin on the wheel. I need those in my life now. Amazone. So sometimes magical place when it's not taking over the world. If y'all really want, I will find the link. They are giant and ridiculous and my cats fear them. It's super hilarious. Um, let me see. Oh, hang on. I missed a bunch of chat when we were doing our, our tutorial. So let's go back. Mm -mm -mm. Welcome again, Raiders. I really appreciate y'all being here. I just started learning drop spindle. Haven't dropped it yet. That's a streak. That's amazing. <laughs> the first thing I did was drop it and it's fine. Cactus is more complicated than we think. Everything, every house has a different humidity. Oh, that's a good point. It was probably too dry in my house. I probably should have kept them outside. If anyone, if I need any more help, I'm just going to look on YouTube and can go back you can go back to the wheel. Okay, good. Uh, but if you have more questions, let me know. But I hope that really super duper helped. Or at least gave you some key terms to Google. It's all just practice. And the thing I will say, the thing about spinning is it feels impossible until all of a sudden it clicks and your hands know what to do and then you're making yarn and everything is magic. That's always a nice feeling. Um, but spinning on the spinning wheel is much faster, so don't get frustrated that you're not going as fast on a, on a spindle. But you also have to remember that a spindle is portable. So like for the longest time, I actually spun faster on my spindle because I was just spinning more often. Um, so like because I was spinning for 30 minutes on my lunch break on my spindle, I was spinning way more on my spindle than I was on my wheel because I just didn't get time at my wheel. Um, and my first several spins were like one ply on the Turkish spindle and then the other two or three plies on the wheel, which is also nice. 
Uh, Elysian Odyssey, thank you for the follow. Thank you for being here today. The click, it happens when you least expect it. I haven't been spinning on my spindle since the before times because I've just been home or working from home. But now that I'm back in the office I and now that I have the spindle out, I have the bug. So I feel like some of this is going to get spun up on the spindle. Drum Carter expected Monday. Yes. Yes. Drop it like it's hot. I love that I can take my spindle when I go out. Yes. Although usually I take I take my sock knitting with me when I go out. I think I think a lunch break's gonna be some uh some Turkish spindle spinning. Would a spindle be good on an airplane? No, because you don't have enough leg room. And you would probably have too much elbows out. If you had the electric eel wheel nano, you could put it right there on the uh on the tray and spin right off of it. Cause that is very tiny. I wouldn't spindle it all in an aircraft. Cause I feel like there's too many parts. And I also feel like your arms would be too far out. Cause you want something that's compact. So, like, if you really wanted to spin on a plane, I kind of feel like the Nano is the only option. And the problem with the support spindle, like I said, is because you're drawing out the yarn... I just don't think there's enough arm room. I think you will inadvertently elbow somebody and be that person on the airplane who couldn't keep their elbows to themselves. You know, the more the greatest mortal sin known to humankind. You'd punch your neighbor. I mean, I would anyway. I throw bows. I throw elbows constantly. Also, the first time you're spinning, take lots of breaks. Only spin for like 15 minutes at a time and then take a 30 minute rest. Because you're using all sorts of um, wrist and these, these Popeye the Sailor Man muscles spinning that you don't do when you're knitting. Um, so the first time you're learning to spin and you're really getting into the groove of it, Stop and take breaks. We taught Hinka Knits how to spin on our on my trip. And uh, she's like, no, I'm not going to take breaks. I was like, okay. Because she was like, I'm only spinning up an ounce of yarn. It'll be fine. I was like, all right. And the next day she goes, oh, man, those muscles. You did warn me. <laughs> I was like, I'm telling you.
Which is funny, because then the next day she learned how to weave on the loom, and she did not realize how full body a floor loom can be. And then she goes, and now all my back muscles are sore. <laughs> Which is hilarious. What if I have a hyperfixation? Um, set a timer. Set a timer on your phone. Every, every 30 minutes. Every 15 minutes. Take a stretch break. It's also for the first several days that you do it. Like, eventually you build up the muscles to it, right? Um, and then you can sit for longer and longer periods of time. But spinning, very similar to knitting, is repetitive stress. You're doing the same movement over and over and over again. Don't be me in hyper-focus and eight hours later. Um, have done, will do again. Learn from me. Everyone stay cool and hydrate. <laughs> have to go grocery shopping. A stitch in time. Thank you again so much for bringing your folks by. Uh, I hope you have a uneventful time at the grocery store. Um, and uh, a great weekend if I don't see you. Also, stay cool and hydrate. It's hot. I mean, it's not hot for me. It's hot for y'all. It's just normal for me. Avina, good morning. Hello. Happy weekend. Another thing to keep in mind when you're spinning is that the finer you spin your yarn, the more twist it has to have to stay together. So, like, you don't have to spin as fine as me. I like spinning four-ply fingering weight. It's just kind of what my hands go to. It's very fine. Um, You could also spin, like, a two-ply fingering. Like, you could spin much less complicated things than what I like to spin. So the thicker your yarn, the less twist it will need to stay together because the hair automatically wants to stick together. The wool wants to cling to each other. Speaking of alpaca, have you ever worked with alpaca? Um, I have. Uh, I've knit with alpaca. I do really like it. Um... And I've spun an alpaca blend before, and it was very smooth and silky. But I haven't worked with just nothing but alpaca for spinning yet. It's on the list. Dueling Needles, hello! Happy weekend! Happy time zone! Binge watch a show and spin and forget human stuff. Heck yeah. But that's also easy to do if you, like, take a break in between episodes. Like, you watch an episode and then you make yourself stand up and stretch and take a, and take a few minutes. Constant, constant breaks in crafting. But that, again, that's just repetitive stress and stretching and good ergonomics. Is that what that is? Good muscle relief. I struggled with spinning alpaca. It was almost too soft, light as air. 
Interesting. I've spun... It was an Amarino Alpaca Silk Blend, and my goodness, did it spin like butter. But it was also blended extremely well. Like this, this is a Merino, uh, Merino Silk Blend, and I was really worried about the silk content, but it's blended so nicely that this is also spinning up very smoothly. This is Three Waters Farm. And my goodness, do I love Three Waters Farm and Jakira Farms are my favorite blended boys. Need a shirt that says my other spin is Angora. <laughs> it's the dorkiest shirt and I love it. All right, let's see here. I now have uh, white wool all over my shirt for the record. Probably, and I want to blame it on cat hair, but it's not. Look at all this. Look at all this fuzz I just pulled off my shirt. Oh, well. Oh, no. I know it's slightly blue. Let's, uh, we're just gonna throw that bit away. It's fine. Still blue. Well, that's embarrassing. Let's see what I have in my drawers. Here we go. You almost need a spinning apron to catch all the fuzz. Some people do. Um, I usually have a pillowcase that I use as like a lap apron to keep it off my pants. Um, and then it is dual purpose because I have a black pillowcase and a white pillowcase. And I put down whatever one is more contrasting to what I'm spinning. Um, and it does, I use it whether I'm streaming or not. Because like the other night I was trying to spin the last of that purpley bit and it's all like gray and light purple against gray pajama pants and that's not cute. Um, so that was nice. Definitely, definitely helps. Also, even though most people drop spindle sitting down or standing up, I would drop spindle like over a table your first time with like a towel down um, until you get the hang of it. Or a mat. I have a, a big desk mat that's like a giant mouse pad and I freaking love spindling on that thing. Use a bath towel over my legs. There you go. Um, we didn't have extra bath towels, but we did have extra pillows, pillowcases. So pillowcase it is. Um, and then it's delightful because I can just lint roller it and then throw it in the washer every so often. And that's nice. Oh, 
But again, you know, it's kind of one of those things to where you can do so much with improvisation, knitting and spinning and crocheting and whatnot. And then when it comes to be Christmas time, ask for a nice upgrade. I know people who use paper clips as stitch markers. It still works. Just fine. But the funner the stitch marker, the funner the knitting, so you know. It's always a nice upgrade. And they're cute. The pillowcase is much less bulky too. I get hot in the summers with a towel. Yeah. I mean, not if you use like a hand towel, but yes, if you use like a beach towel, like a bath towel sized. <laughs> you just need to get less nice towels, I think is what your problem is. You need to get shittier towels, you see. Ginger Zone, how's it going? How's your Makariri shawl? I started the first section of lace last night. And then I promptly screwed up the first section of lace last night. And then frogged the first section of lace. And then went to bed. That will be this afternoon. Slash craft night. I was doing really good, and then I think I I either increased too much or not enough at the beginning and the end of the row, and my stitch count got off, so then my lace got off, and then I was tired, and then I also spent 20 minutes looking at it going like, but is this right? I can't even tell. And then I just decided to take it off. Squishy and oh so lovely. How how far are you in it? I want to know. And also and did you pick a third color? Tell me all the things. I would like to be nosy. I had to redo section B. We think there's an error and it should be all slip with yarn in front at the beginning, so watch out for that. Oh. Nice eyes. Thank you, Moondoggy. How's it going, my dude? Um, my brioche sweater is amazing. I'm still on sleeve number two. <laughs> uh, the body fits great. So all I need to do is the last half of the second sleeve, the top collar, and then the bottom hem. Um, it fits like a dream. It looks gorgeous. It's now to the point where it's so big and bulky to knit on. I can't take it places though. Um, and it's too hot to sit downstairs with it on my lap on the couch and knit. So I only knit at it sitting at my desk, which means I have not gotten very far at all. Started the last section, third color. Had just enough. Aw, yeah. Does anyone not use stitch counters? Um, so there's usually, so there's row counters. And then there's stitch markers. So the stitch markers do like sections. And I love using stitch markers because I have a billion of them. So why not? Why not use them every 10 stitches if that's what makes it easier for you? Um, so most people use stitch markers. Um, row counters are not essential, but they are very helpful to keep track of the pattern. 
but there are a billion different ways to count rows. Um, so you can get the fancy, the thumb counter that I like to use. I call it fancy. It's a whole like four or five bucks at Joanne Fabrics. Um, you can mark it down with pen and paper. You can highlight the pattern. You can get one of those row counter apps for your phone or your smartwatch. Um, Soft Goth Love likes to use a D20 on stream. So she has an oversized D20 that she just changes to mark the row, which I think is fantastic, and then does it in, in sets of 20. Um, so not necessary, but definitely makes things easier. It's too hot to wear now anyways. Yeah. So I'm on, I'm on Sleeve Island and I need to go back and finish it. Um, and I will, and I love it, but also I can't, can't really wear it right now. So to be continued. I'm also just trying to finish on finish, focus on finishing other knits right now. Because I had started a whole bunch of stuff at the beginning of the year. And I need to focus on going back to get them all TCO'd. Unlurk. Welcome back. Considering most crafters are easily distracted, stitch markers are essential. Yes. Also that. I use pen and paper, yeah. I mean, there's a there's a ton of different ways. It also depends upon you know, what the pattern is and how fast it's knitting. Like, if I'm knitting a shawl and every row takes me half an hour, like, pen and paper's fine. If I'm knitting a sock, though, like, I don't want to have to keep picking up and putting down the pen. I'll just use a thumb counter. And personal preference. One looks like he's missing an eye. He's not missing an eye. He's just, it's hidden. How are you doing, Moondoggy? My soot sprites are busy. Busy, busy beans today. I'm gonna have to give them extra sprinkles at dinner time tonight. So like for the for the Macariri shawl, um I've just been using I've just been marking it down on the pattern because I have the pattern printed out and it's easier to physically keep track of it on the paper pattern. But it's all personal preference. And I the thing I like about crafting is that there are a million different ways to do things. So there's really no right or wrong reason. It's just whatever works best for you in that situation. So I definitely uh, enjoy that aspect as well. And I keep moving this up and down the, the hooks. So the hooks are staggered, so they go back and forth. And what this does is it helps um, fill up the bobbin evenly so I can fit as much fluff as possible on here. This will be a whole four ounce bobbin. So much fluff. It's just funny looking at it from this point of view. That's fair. We're trying out a new camera angle today so that you guys can see more of what my spinning looks like. Because normally my camera is like right overhead of my spinning, my spinning wheel, like a, a true top down shot. So today I'm trying to do a little bit more off to the side angled so you guys can see a bit more.
because uh, Thursday I had tilted the wheel and Excel Empress hadn't even noticed that it had a wheel, a circle bit to it because it was so overhead. So I'm hoping that uh, this makes it a little clearer. I don't know. You'll have to tell me what you think. Looks good. Thank you, sir. I love hearing how other people have figured out how to do things or things that they use. People are really creative. Yes. I love, yeah, I love the stories of like, I didn't have X, Y, Z. So instead I just did this and you know what? It works better and it's cheaper. Which is how the uh, straight knitting needles through the bobbin in a shoebox Lazy Kate was born. And you know what? That works so good. And I'll probably have to make a shoebox Lazy Kate for when my electric eel wheel nano gets in. Kind of wool are you spinning it looks undyed it is undyed so this is just a plain old it's uh not quite right not quite quite it is an ecru slightly off white uh it is a merino wool silk blend Uh, so this is part of the, the great purple blanket shawl. Um, so we had the, the one bobbin full of the very dark purple. We did one of the two bobbins of the light mixed purple. And then there's going to be one, one bobbin of the white. And I'm going to ply it up. And it's going to be this purple, white, barber pole mess beauty. Beautiful mess. And then I'm going to knit it up into something that is a blanket for when the meeting rooms are too cold at work, but looks fancier like a shawl so I can get away with wearing a blanket at work. That's the goal. It's probably just going to be garter stitch on the diagonal. I'm probably going to do like the hibernation throw. But like half width kind of deal. Where it's just garter squish deliciousness. Um, but this is because it's silk, it's um, very slippery. And uh, it's got a nice sheen to it, although the camera is not doing it justice, of course. Uh, what are we? We're an hour and a half in. It is sheep wool, yes. Uh, it is merino sheep wool. So only, only wool is sheep. Uh, only so wool is only from sheep. Fleece is anything that is sheared off an animal. So you can have alpaca fleece or llama fleece or other things. But wool is technically sh only sheep. Uh, and this, so this is a wool silk blend and the specific breed, because different breeds have different wool qualities, uh, is merino which is the most common type of wool. Although not my favorite. Everybody likes Merino, but man, I like BFL and Coriadale. Alpaca doesn't have wool? Nope, alpaca has a fleece. So you can fleece an alpaca and you can have a bunch of alpaca roving or top or fleece to spin. 
but wool is only only sheeps. Only sheepies. If you want to be really, really technical. First of all, sheepdog wool is not a thing. Wool does not come from dogs. Second of all, I don't want to spin dog hair. It's all floof. Yes, floof is the technical term. <laughs> and it all can be spun. Um, but dog hair is not known for its um, fabric qualities. So for example, wool doesn't generally hold an odor. It is odor repellent. It is naturally moisture wicking and temperature controlling. Wool is the only material that keeps its temperature when it's wet, um, which is why fisherman wool is a thing because even when it's wet, it still stays warm when it's cold. Um, which is why wool socks are not as gross as cotton socks, because when cotton socks get, get wet, they get cold and then make your feet feel weird. Like if you've ever taken your shoes off and then one around your socks and you're like, oh, this is disgusting. Um, wool socks don't do that. Uh, I, I couldn't tell you what qualities dog hair has, though. I'm out of prepped floof must comb. Geo, do you just have, like, stations at your house where you're like, this is the cleaning station, and then this is the this station, and you just take turns at your own stations? This is what I imagine life is like. I have seven girls in my house and it gets all in my rooms. In my room bus, if you need bundles, I can send you some. No, we are not. First of all, I have enough hair. Thank you. Second of all, I am not spinning human hair. Um, human hair does not have the qualities I am looking for. It's also way too thick. Do not like. Aluna? Please let me know if I'm mispronouncing that. Good afternoon. Hello. Uh, this is a merino silk blend. So it is wool and silk. And I'm not always the biggest silk fan when it comes to spinning because it can be very clumpy. Um, but this is blended very nicely. So it is spinning very smooth. Wash every other week. Yes, wool also doesn't have to be washed as often because it is odor repellent. And I don't think it's antimicrobial, but it has properties. I can look it up. Wool's magic. Soft, yes, very soft. Uh, and it has a very slight, delicious sheen to it that's just kind of making it glow that, of course, the camera's like, I don't understand, so we just won't. Uh, yes, it is It is extra soft. It's very nice. Uh, this is, in case you're wondering, it is Three Waters Farm uh, Merino Tessa Silk Blend. An ecru, which is just fancy words for uh, slightly off-white, undyed. Um, so let's take a quick break, real fast. I'll sit up and I'll show you the other the other plies that we have so far. So I have this delicious purple, 
Uh, this is um, Wolfiend. Um, super delicious. So I have four ounces of this. We'll have four ounces of the white. And then I have um, this delicious um, BFL Merino blend, also from Three Waters Farm. Uh, that we'll have two plies of this and I'll just spin it up into a beautiful purple barber pole mess and knit a very squishy garter-ish stitch shawl that will be like a blanket for at work. It will be delicious. I wash my knit items when they smell bad or I drop food. Yes. Oh, wash raw fleece. Gotcha. Yeah, socks are really nice because you can just wear them until they start to smell weird or they get stiff from like your foot oils. I once saw a person on TikTok spinning bunny fur straight from the source. Yes. Angora. From a live bunny. Yes, that's a thing that happens. It's magic. I want a bunny. <laughs> I don't want to have to deal with a bunny. I just want to spin off of a bunny. Uh, Proud Pop Pop, hello. And thank you for the follow the other day. Um, does Damien have those slippers too? No, he does not. Damien doesn't wear slippers. He only wears hand knit socks by Stacy because he is spoiled boy. Quick, what's your bacon cooking secret? You put it on parchment paper, you put it in a cold oven, and then you turn the oven on 350 for say 20 minutes and then check it until it's crispy enough to finish. Did that answer your question, Hinka? I mean, I cooked take a bacon. <laughs> I cooked take a bacon when we hung out. I walk barefoot. I usually walk bare. Well, I am usually barefoot. I'm in Florida, so everything's hot. So it's very barefoot flip floppy. But the problem is, is that inside is always freezing. And inside downstairs are cold tile floors. Um, So the, the wool socks are very nice. Hinka, enjoy your bacon. Good luck. Good luck. <laughs> Would rabbits be more practical than a alpaca? Um, for me, no. Because the whole point in that alpaca was it, um, so alpacas are um, herd creatures. You can't just have one alpaca. You have to have a pack of alpaca. They like to be together. They like to gossip. Um, so there is an alpaca farm nearby to where basically you buy and sponsor an alpaca. So you pay for the animal. You pay for the animal's upkeep, and then this farm raises them all together with a profit margin built in, obviously. But it's so that, like, if you only wanted, like, one or two alpaca, that they could still live in a pack. And for people, like, I can't have backyard animals here um, where I live, where I'm zoned. Um, so, like, I can't have backyard chickens or backyard alpaca. So it's it's specifically for people. It's like it's like it's like a it's like an animal timeshare. Um, so in that case, having the alpaca would be much less upkeep because I wouldn't have to worry about it. Uh, whereas bunnies, then I would have to worry about cleaning out their cages and all the feeding and the combing and the everything. I don't want any more animals to take care of, though. I already have cats. And a Damien. And that's enough. I can barely take care of myself some days. I don't need additional things. 
Cats are just self-sufficient enough. I feel like that's okay. Edgewater! Heck yeah. Uh, we are in uh, the greater Orlando area. I work at Walt Disney World. Geo wants, Geo wants an Angora rabbit real bad though. You should share drink recipes too. Damien told us a few nice ones. Damien is the bartender connoisseur. Uh, I'm really good at telling you how to sneak alcohol into other drinks. <laughs> Making a nice cup of tea? Put some Japanese whiskey in there. It'll be delicious. Want something a little bit more subtle? Have you tried adding some sake instead? Uh, I just booze up existing drinks. Damien mixes fancy drinks. He's the bartender in the house. I have weak ankles and I messed up my left one multiple times. I heard barefoot walking helps with strengthening the muscles down there. Interesting. I couldn't tell you. Uh, I do know, and I used to have a pair of these, those, they're the earth shoes where the heel is lower than the toe. So it simulates like walking on the beach, even though you're wearing shoes. Those are real nice, but man, are they a workout for your calves. <laughs> For the love of yarn, thank you for being here today. Thank you for that follow. I appreciate it. I'm glad you're enjoying it. Uh, there are several alpaca farms in the NSB area. And uh, up past Ocala as well. Did your cat seem to miss you when you came back from vacation? Yes. Um, yes, they did. Not as, uh, it wasn't as extreme as like if Damien and I had both been gone for two weeks. Um, because Damien was still here and Damien is acceptable human. Um, but my pearl cat was very upset. Um, so normally she, she follows me and snuggles with me, but Damien had to do. So she was very needy and very clingy. And then when I came home, she, for almost like an up until yesterday has followed me from room to room, would not let me out of her sight and got very upset the first day I physically went into work in the office and left, she was not happy that I was putting on shoes and leaving. Cause she could tell. The farm share is such a great idea. I love that. I love it too, but I don't think that that is an investment that I need to be making. I think that is a lot of wool that I suddenly am, will be up to my elbows in. <laughs> Sorry, a lot of fleece uh, that I will be up to my elbows in that I, I just don't need to have right now. Because it's also undyed. So I would have to... The, pro the problem is, is that processing a fleece has a lot of steps and needs a lot of tools. So if you're doing it often and you just invest and do the thing, it's fine. But if you are doing it as like a one-off, it's very difficult and can be rather expensive. Because you have to clean, so you have to skirt it, which is where you cut off all the all the bits of poo around the butt. And you get all, you pick out all the straw and poo bits and bugs and whatever got stuck in it and grass. Then you have to, to clean it. If it's wool... You have to scour it to get the lanolin off. 
to get all the uh, additional oils because um, sheep wool is basically waterproof when it first starts out. When it's on the sheep. Um, and then you have to take it and you have to comb it or cart it or do whatever processing to make it spinnable. If you want to dye it, you need to dye it. The nice part about dyeing is you can do it at any step. So you could dye it before you cart it, or you could dye it after you comb it, or you could dye it before you spin it, or dye it after you spin it, or after you knit it and just dip the whole thing. There's a lot of ways around it, but it is a lot of work. So if you're doing it, a lot of it on a regular basis and you have a flow set up, then it's a lot more worth it. If you're doing it as like a one-off, it's a lot of work for a one-off and a lot of tools you need. Um, a lot of, if you live in a more agricultural area, there's a very good chance that you have like a spinner's guild or a knitter's guild that has a lot of these tools that you can use or has like a farmstead that you can go visit to use their tools kind of thing. But we don't, we don't really have a lot of that in Florida. We have a lot of knitters in Florida, but there's not as many spinners. And of those spinners, there's not a lot of people doing whole fleeces here. Because sheep don't, sheep don't live here. It's too hot for sheeps. Um, so we don't have that same kind of cultural support system in place that a lot of other art collectives or areas could have. Do you mind showing us your knitted or crocheted items? Uh, no. <laughs> Looks around. Hmm, if only I had some. Um... That's not true. I do have some. I don't crochet. I have crocheted in the past. I'm not a big crochet fan. My wrists don't like it. There's, it's too much. I have tiny, I have tiny baby wrists. My wrists are not fans. Um, let me switch over to this camera because I'm going to stretch. Stretch my legs is, ugh. Expensive as hell. Yeah, but Geo, you're processing so much fleece that the more fleece you process, the cheaper everything gets. So then it's fine. Um, oh, hydrate. That's a good one. Let's definitely do that. Off to look for sheepdog. No. Ginger Zone? No. You're not getting sheepdog wool for Christmas this year. Ginger Zone's my sister, by the way. Uh, enjoy your lurk and your doing stuffs, but I you can get sheepdog wool. It's not getting spun. Ginger Zone gets hand spun every year for Christmas. She's very spoiled. I had a phase where I wanted to breed rabbits for meat and fur. I still kind of want to do it. I mean, you could. And Gora, you have to get a specialty rabbit for the... F so unless you want like the pelt, if you want to spin, you have to get a specialty rabbit. Because most rabbit hair is not long enough to spin. No animal more determined to die than a sheep. That is very correct. <laughs> My border collie is flaked out at anything over 85 degrees Fahrenheit. Florida sheep would just walk into gator ponds and call it done. It's too hot here for them. So we don't, there's not, there are no sheep farms in Florida. <laughs> you ever had a zero bar? No, what's a zero bar? I come here and see your slippers. My sit sprite slippers. Hi, bearded daughter gaming. How's it going? Uh, sorry, I'm catching up on chat now that we're taking a quick break. Uh, all right, things that I have knit. Speaking, <laughs> speaking of socks, 
Here are the socks I took off my feet this morning. Boo! There you go. There's cat haired, stinky socks. They're not, I mean, they're not stinky, but there you go. Well worn, let's say. My little shorty socks. Um, I don't have a lot of knitting nearby. I do have the, the shawl that I'm knitting on. So I have the pair of socks I was wearing a moment ago. And then I have the, the shawl I have been knitting on. The This is how the light gets in shawl. And it's turning out real good. I like it very much. All right. Ooh. Purple, hello. How's it going? I can get you a husky. <laughs> a husky would die. It's too hot down here for huskies. Tanned rabbit skin. Ooh. Fancy. Are you going to go into the tanning business? It's a caramel peanut and almond nougat bar covered in white fudge. Um, no, but I would like some. <laughs> that sounds delicious. We're not, I'm not spinning dog hair. No. No, thank you. My friend always offers. Four huskies, hair everywhere. Been lurking and enjoying the soot sprites? Heck yeah. They're they're good, super rich. They sound super rich, but they also sound freaking delicious. All right, gang. Uh, I am gonna take a quick um, five minute break because I need to stand up and walk around a bit. Um, we're gonna run an ad, and uh, I'm gonna get more coffee, which is the big thing. I need more coffee. Um, so we're gonna take a quick break, uh, and then we're gonna come back and we're gonna hang out. And we're gonna spend some more. Um. Let's get the break screen going. All right. Uh, also, y'all get up and stretch and hydrate and also do the thing. Because I know y'all have just been sitting there being comfortable. So get up and stretch and I'll be right back.
Hey guys, I'm back. <laughs> Avina, thank you for that sub. I really appreciate it. I'm not spending dog hair. <laughs> goodness all right um geez what did i miss some people have double coated dogs and make their yarn out of the undercoat that's what mohair is mohair is uh usually goat hair but it's the undercoat of certain goats <laughs> dog hair no horse hair horse hair doesn't sound like it would be soft at all and horse hair is so long I don't feel like it would be easy to spin apparently there is buffalo apparently buffalo wool is is or uh, buffalo hair is fairly fairly easy to spin And quite soft when you get the undercoat as well. Uh, the top coat are usually called guard hairs. So it's there's the guard hairs and then the undercoat if y'all want to get extra fancy. I'm just trying to troll Stacy, maybe trick her. Ginger Zone, go lurk! Gosh, get out of here. Fiber Floof Arts, hello. How's it going? Happy weekend. There's also cow yarn. Why? Horse hair is used in brushes. Uh, isn't horse hair still used for violin bows? For bow bowing? Horse hair is so stiff it is used in brushes or in the lining of coat collars. Yes, and it's also the what you use on a bow for violins and cellos, if I'm not mistaken. Go brush your dog and send her all the fluff. No! She can't deny us. Yes, I can! A never-ending trash can. I have a very large trash can, and I'm not afraid to use it. You go 